Ladies and gentlemen, hey, hi, how you doing? Welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for stopping by. Without a doubt, the two most competitive categories in Warzone right now are the Assault Rifles and the SMGs. And just a few days ago, we went through and we ranked every single SMG in the game. I went over the best loadouts for the top meta weapons. And today we're basically doing the same thing, but with the Assault Rifles. Now, over the course of time, we've seen a lot of different rifles claim that, you know, king rifle spot, that top meta spot. But right now, honestly, the rifle meta is in a very, very fun and competitive place. So as we go through everything today, if you enjoy the video at any point, let me know by dropping a like on it, it would be seriously appreciated. Let's go for 3000 likes on this one. And of course, if you're new here or if you have not already subscribed, feel free to do so. That way you can always guarantee you are up to date with everything going on in COD. News, updates, loadouts, tips, it is all right here every single day. So we're back here on the tier list made specifically for the rifles. We've got every AR in the game with the exception of the Vanguard STG. Uh, I didn't want to have that one on here just because we don't have a true feel for that weapon since all we can use is the blueprints and the blueprints really aren't the most optimal builds in the world. The close range one is, you know, it, it's missing some things here and there and the long range one just isn't like the most optimal build in my opinion. So I didn't want to have that sort of skewing things here and there. But other than that, we have every MW and every Cold War rifle here. Obviously, we have our regular categories as always. Top or meta, the best of the best. Competitive, not necessarily number one, but still very, very good. Viable, you could get away with using it, but there are better options. Below average, wouldn't really recommend. Niche, which is just different, still good, but not really uh, super versatile. And garbage, which sort of speaks for itself. So starting off, we've got the Krig. And honestly, after all the nerfs, I think this thing is just viable. The recoil is not nearly as, uh, you know, good as it once was. It's no longer that shoot straight laser beam with zero effort. It does have some noticeable recoil now compared to, you know, some other rifles. It's more similar to some of those others. And the damage is just not good. It doesn't have really any strengths when it comes to damage, maybe outside of the neck multiplier. Really though, like this thing does not hit hard anymore. It's not a laser beam anymore. I just don't think it's really all that great. You could still get away with using it and it will uh, be that sort of mid-tier rifle, but it's definitely not, you know, a super meta rifle as it stands. Now the Pharah though, I think is sort of the replacement to the Krig in a lot of ways. It's definitely a competitive rifle. It has decent recoil. It does have some strange horizontal bounce here and there, even on affected 120 FOV, uh, but its TTK is still very, very good. It's got great velocity and over range. It's one of the better rifles, at least in my opinion. It's not the uh, the OG Pharaoh, which was very broken and super easy to use. But where it stands right now, I think it is one of the better rifles in the game and definitely one of the top Cold War options we currently have. Now the XM4, I'm gonna go ahead and truly say that this thing is currently one of the top rifles and it's a meta rifle in the game. I mean, for close range, medium range, long range, you name it, this thing is very, very good. It has very low recoil, which is great as is. And its damage is also very impressive. Like, I love using this thing. Lately, the XM4 has been one of my go-to rifles in the game. It's just a ton of fun to use, very easy, very straightforward, and it's very reliable. So, like, you can't go wrong with it, right? Truly, right now, I do think it is one of the best options in the game. Not the fastest killing, but one of those ones that any player can sort of pick it up and do really well with it, right? Now, the FFAR is an interesting choice because it's it's somewhere on the table between below average and viable. It's definitely not better than that. It's not garbage, but between all the nerfs that it's seen over the course of time, its mobility is now awful. Even when you build it for mobility, it's not good. Uh, its control is also awful. It bounces around like crazy. It has not like a bad pattern, let's say, but the visual bounce and just the, the weird horizontal uh, parts of it, just uh, they're, they're not it. I don't know if I want to put it in viable or below average. I think for the time being, we'll go to viable. But if there's a bunch of other weapons in this category by the end, I, I would take over the FFR. I'll probably drop this one down to that below average spot. But for now, I guess it's viable, but I wouldn't really be, uh, you know, a big advocate for using the FFAR in the current meta. Now the QBZ, uh, I personally, I'm not a huge fan of it. Like I, it's just a gun that feels weird to me, but you can't deny the fact that it is still very good. Now I don't think it is top meta. Like for me personally, I would take the XM4 every single day, every single game over the QBZ. But on paper, the thing is very good. Raven's clearly shown that they favor this uh, specifically as a long range rifle. So you can't deny the fact that it is going to do what it needs to do, right? So competitive, I feel like is a very appropriate place for that to sit. Now the Groza really is not anything special. You could use it, but I mean, it's not gonna be, it's not gonna be some weapon that just absolutely decimates the entire lobby, right? Like. This is truly what I thought was going to replace the FFAR when the FFAR was that 
god tier meta weapon right and then it got nerfed and i was like okay the grows is gonna replace it but they sort of saw through that and were like okay we're gonna nerf the grows at the same time too so we don't have a repeat scenario and uh ever since then like the grows that really has not been in the conversation it has decent damage profiles you could use this as a sniper support weapon uh long range it's really not super great but viable is uh, is a good way to describe it honestly because it's not incredible but it's not awful now we've got the cold war ak you know this is the cold war one because it's level 55 the mw1 goes up to 68 almost nice uh cold war ak very easily top meta i mean the damage speaks for itself the best ttk through about 40 meters compared to pretty much every other gun in the game over range it's also phenomenal doesn't really have any harsh drop-offs the recoil i feel like is very simple like all around this thing is probably the most versatile rifle we have on this list today so easy pick for top meta now the scar unfortunately i think really has to go in the below average spot like i want to say it's viable because it does have insane damage but small magazine it had good recoil for all of three days and then they nerfed the recoil again so it's really not good in that department <laughs> like they just don't like the scar it seems so there's just too many negative factors with this thing like really the only pro it has going for it is the really good damage but there's just a very long list of cons mw weapons so trash mobility uh very small magazine capacity not so great recoil like it's just there's too many things backing this up against the wall for it to be able to compete in really any kind of meta right now so the scar just is not it now the ram is definitely borderline competitive and viable this is another tricky choice here because i mean personally i do like the ram a lot more than say the ffar or the groza um it's close to the krig it definitely has a way better ttk but at the same time you got to think it is an mw weapon so bad mobility yet again attachments aren't super optimal compared to cold war weapons but its ttk is honestly very good and i'm really really tempted to put this one in competitive we'll leave it for now we'll see how the list turns out by the end of the video but i mean the stats alone if you don't factor in the mobility and the fact that it's a modern warfare weapon it would seem like it's a pretty solid gun i do still think it's really uh usable for sniper support and even as a main primary because over range it's actually surprisingly good so I don't think it's the best competitive weapon, but I do think it's better than the options that we have in Viable for the most part so far. Now, this is one that I'm very excited about, the M4A1. For a while, this was nothing special, right? Like the M4A1 was just a mid-tier rifle for quite some time when all the Cold War weapons were taking over. But now that they've seen some nerfs, I truly do think the M4A1 is competitive now. Like its recoil is one of the easiest to learn in the game any player can pick this up just like the xm4 and do very well with it uh the damage while it's not you know as good as some of these top meta weapons or some of the cold war weapons all the time is still very capable of having the gun hold its own across range so i think the m4 one honestly is uh is definitely competitive right now i'd take it over the ram for sure just because of personal preference just because the easier recoil uh and so for that reason yeah i think it's one of the better options now the fr556 i'm just gonna be frank it's uh it's not even below average it's just bad it's just not it. It was uh, maybe when the shotgun, the underbarrel shotgun meta was a thing. Yeah, then it was top meta for that whole like two weeks. It was the gun to use. Uh, but really, this is just a slow firing, awkward burst weapon. Yeah, you could do the single fire option on it, but that just raises the skill gap on the weapon unnecessarily. Like there's no real reason to ever want to use the FR556 unless you're streaming and someone gave you 500 bits to say, hey, use this bad weapon and try and get five kills with it, right? So like I wouldn't ever recommend going out of your way to use this gun just because it uh it's it's not gonna win fights it, it takes too much effort too much work to try and fight against any of these weapons on the list so far and even then it's probably not gonna win just because it's annoying to use now the odin just like the scar i feel like probably is gonna sit in below average i want to say it's viable strictly based off of its damage properties because let's be real here the the theoretical ttk with this thing just because of how powerful it is is absurd but you have that super slow fire rate you have a terrible magazine capacity mw weapon again so trash mobility especially when you build it out to be good for range so it it really doesn't have all that much going for it in the same situation that the scar doesn't have much going for it it's only pro is the power and that doesn't outweigh everything else in my opinion now the m13 i'm just saying is viable it really is not that strong it is a laser beam don't get me wrong it takes very little skill to use it's just point and shoot the recoil is super simple and that's why i feel like the m13 has such a huge community behind it of players that just love using it because it is a laser beam it's so easy to use over range but its damage just really is not special and i you'll never convince me otherwise compare it uh you know on true game data to other weapons and it's really not going to be uh that shining star that a lot of players want it to be if they buff the damage you know by a couple of points here and there it truly could be one of the best options in the game but it never has gotten that damage buff that it's needed so it's always been that laser beam rifle that just is not strong enough 
but it's easy enough to use that you can still get some solid kills with it. So Viable is where it's sitting for now. And same deal with the Kilo, but the M13 is definitely better than the Kilo in my opinion because the Kilo has over a thousand millisecond TTK over range. Uh, the recoil is all right on it, but the TTK is just not fast enough to be able to compete with things uh, like the Krig, the Pharah, the QBZ, anything above this, honestly. Uh, it's it's going to get outgunned by most cases. So it's better than something like the Scar or the Odin because it does have better capabilities, but it's not going to really get anything uh, higher than viable, I think, ever again. Now, the Growl, I'm not going to lie, I love the Growl. I think it. I think it's low tier competitive, high tier viable. So you could probably bounce back and forth between these two categories and it wouldn't make much of a difference. But you got to think one of the easiest to use weapons in the game, I think more so than the M4, the Ram, the M13, the Kilo, like this thing, especially with the Archangel barrel, when you have that super clean iron sight is phenomenal. The recoil is so easy to use, so easy to learn. Uh, it's damage is all right. It's nothing to write home about, but it's still going to be competitive enough where it's easy enough to land shots consistently that, that the damage output is going to be okay. Uh, it's got insane velocity, like the attachments, while it's slow for being a modern warfare weapon, uh, make this thing just a uh, an absolute gunner over range. Like, I love this thing. It's been one of my favorite rifles ever since it was added in, and I do think it still stands as a competitive option. Great for using it on like a fully loaded setup, which is what I usually do. So, I'm going to keep it in competitive for now, but really competitive or viable for that wouldn't really make a huge difference. Now, the MWAK is definitely viable, uh, probably close to hitting below average. You'd, you'd think that because the Cold War AK is so good and so dominant the, that the MWAK would be close, but it's just not the case, right? This thing, trash mobility, decent damage. The control also really isn't all that bad, but it just doesn't compete when you compare it to other Cold War rifles specifically, especially its Cold War counterpart. It is absolutely just standing in its shadow permanently. Now, the AN94, again, I think is just going to be a viable option. The hyperburst feature is really cool. So like close range fights where that recoil is going to be a lot more uh, easy to control, like over range, the hyperburst is probably going to mess you up. Up close, though, you can really take advantage of that. And it'll be really, really good if you can spam that hyperburst. But that's really all it's got going for it. Outside of that, it is about as average of a rifle as you could possibly get. Like there is nothing special about it besides the hyperburst feature. It's always a weapon that I really thought should be a meta weapon if it got like that slight little push in the right direction. They just never gave it to it because it is an MW weapon. So uh, unfortunately, I do think it sits in viable. Something you're gonna notice throughout the video, primarily everything in that, you know, balanced out category viable is gonna be an MW weapon because for one, they're trying to push Cold War weapons still, but also two, they've just been around long enough that they've been able to sort of tune them to the subjective perfection level. Obviously some players want the A94 to be top tier meta, so it's not perfect right now but i uh, you know they're going to be the most well balanced because they've been around the longest and they're not the favored weapons in terms of the business strategy now the amax though definitely competitive we've talked about this one a little bit recently like its headshot multiplier is insane its damage to other parts of the body is absolutely up there with some of the better cold war weapons so 100 this thing falls in competitive uh honestly i think as does the fal now this thing is definitely the highest skill gap weapon i think on the entire list but the TTK here, close range, medium range, long range, does not matter. It's phenomenal. It's so good because of just how hard this weapon is to use because it's semi-auto. So it does take a much more skilled player to fully master this weapon. But a master with the FAL is going to outgun a master with the RAM, with the M4, with the QBZ. It'd be close probably between the AK and like the XM4. But truly, the FAL is that sleeper weapon that is just so dominant, but only for a select few players. But really, I do think it is a very competitive weapon still. Now, the AS Val is going to fall in niche. Uh, it's damage. It's TTK. Really, really good. One of the best in the game. But it's it it's only good in solos. Like in duos, you're giving yourself a, a harder time because even 30 rounds with this fire rate, it's really not going to be able to squad wipe a duo unless you have insane accuracy. Trios, you're absolutely going to be stuck reloading. Quads, you're stuck reloading. Like solos is really the only place this thing is a competitive weapon. So that fills that niche void perfectly. Now, the C58 definitely is competitive uh it does have some you know more recoil and uh, a lesser damage output than it did before when it was top meta but it's still one of my favorite rifles in the game i'm just super comfortable with it super familiar with it and even now after the nerfs that it's received i still find it very easy to use it's a pretty straightforward weapon and its damage is still good enough that it easily competes with some of these better competitive options and is honestly uh capable of occasionally outgunning these top meta weapons which i feel like is exactly what a competitive weapon should do uh, EM2, it's going to fall in the same place, a little bit harder to use, especially on console because that increased recoil and visual kick. But we've talked about this one recently as well. Over, I think, 35, 40 meters, its TTK is actually better than the AK-47s. 
whether or not you know that ease of use on the AK versus the EM2 is worth it, uh, comparing one to the other, and what you want to use. That's sort of up for uh, you know individual interpretation. But this thing absolutely is going to fry players if you're able to land your shots. Then lastly, we've got the Grav, which truly I think is just a viable weapon. The recoil is kind of abysmal. They've even buffed it and it's still really not all that good. The damage is pretty solid, especially for like closer range fights. So like sniper support, it's a pretty solid option for that. Uh, but as a core rifle here, especially as a Cold War rifle where so many are used for primaries with the basic uh, setup that we'll get to here in a little bit, it's just not the uh, the best choice. Like I wouldn't really ever take it over a C58 or an EM2 or really anything in the competitive category, maybe besides the FAL and definitely not over top meta. So. Viable is, I really, th I think is the best spot for it at the moment. If they were to ever, you know, reduce the recoil more, it probably would bump up to competitive, but as it stands right now, nothing special. Now we've got our list ranked out. Honestly, I love this because really viable, competitive, top meta, anything here you can use. Only four weapons in the entire assault rifle category I wouldn't recommend, right? I guess the Val I still would for solos, but so really three weapons I wouldn't recommend. Everything else though is usable. And obviously the Vanguard STG is still very, very good. That'd probably be incompetitive if we had the base weapons. But like I said, with just blueprints, it's an awkward thing to rank compared to, you know, weapons that we can fully customize and everything. But what's great about, I guess not necessarily great, but what's easy about the Assault Rifle category is that regardless of whether you're using a Modern Warfare weapon or a Cold War weapon, the setups are all pretty much a copy and paste of one another. For Modern Warfare weapons, obviously you're going for the monolithic suppressor, you're going for the largest barrel in most cases, which gives you the best range, velocity, and control. You're usually going for a commando foregrip as well, that's usually the best grip for rifles. Uh, you're going for the either largest or second largest mag, depending on the exact weapon. And then you're also going for either a hollow sight or the VOK three times optic. And you got your five attachments there. That is pretty much applicable to every single Modern Warfare weapon. M4, RAM, AMAX, FAL could be a setup there, uh, depending on where you want to use it. Close range obviously would be a little bit different, uh, but literally for every single weapon, that is the go-to setup for Modern Warfare. Now for Cold War, we also know this, it is a copy and paste on pretty much every single weapon as well. You're going for Gru or Agency Suppressor, the Task Force Barrel. You're usually going for the Spetsnaz or the Field Agent Grip. You're also going for the largest or second largest mag that is not a fast mag. Then you're also going for the three times optic. So unfortunately, there is little to no variety in the actual loadouts for these weapons, but there is quite a bit of variety when it comes to the weapons themselves. So yeah, with all that said, that is how I would rank every single rifle we currently have in Warzone and the best meta loadouts for all of them. And that's going to do it for today. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. If you enjoyed the video, let me know by dropping a like on it. It really does help grow the channel. And of course, if you're new here or if you have not already subscribed, feel free to do so. That way you can always stay up to date with everything going on in COD. News, updates, loadouts, tips, intel. It is all right here every single day. But again, thank you guys so much for watching. Until next time, take it easy. Have an awesome rest of your day. And I will see you guys later. Peace out.